uh, for uh, you know interfacing with your database. Do you have these scripts a place where we can scrape them? Oh, any what? Do you have these? Yeah, if you, yeah, these aren't yeah these aren't public, um, but I'll you know I'll send them out if, if I'll send them to you if you're interested. Um, I, yeah, I kind of I mean, yeah. Uh, Without your password. Yeah, you need you need to set up uh, you know your own uh, email email stuff and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I mean these are these are kind of just hobby projects. But if you're interested in seeing seeing kind of the code, then you know I can definitely provide it. There's a there's a book from a library published uh, late 2015 called Red Tree. Yeah, it's an art. I mean, there's a whole. There <laughs> yeah, the, the technology changes, you know, fast, and uh, so you have to change with it. But uh, yeah, w w web scraping is an art, um, and uh, you know, those who are who are good at it can really come up with um, uh, really neat tools and and gather very interesting data sets using it. Um, you know, I think I think doing doing work on you know looking at like housing prices around Seattle is just a wonderful um, uh, you know application of web scraping as long as you can do it you know responsibly. Um, you know, because I think there's a lot of value in the in the data that's just sitting out there. Um, you know, waiting to waiting for somebody to come along and really analyze it. For the bird calls. Uh, those media files, in theory, are copyrighted by somebody. The, yeah, each of those has different. Um, each it ha they have a facility of specifying what um, you can do with each of those. Okay. And uh, the thing is, I mean, you know, when you're doing running machine learning on them, it's kind of interesting because nobody else actually ever will be would be able to hear this audio file. <laughs> you know, it's just ones and zeros that are going into my classifier that are just being anal that the classifier is then learning from. Is that considered fair use? Uh, I, I think so. But, I mean, I'm not. You know, that, that's a that's a tricky you one. Argue that the classifier is a derivative work. It would be. Yeah, I mean. Please. I mean, you could, yeah. I mean, you could, you know, a particularly unpleasant copyright attorney, um, you know, could, you know, uh, try and make that argument. Um, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't actually, you know, I haven't published any of the. Like, yeah, it's definitely not commercial. Uh, I mean, what, what's clearly, you know, uh, forbidden is, you know, taking these recordings and then putting it into an app that then I sell. You know, it says, oh, here's a recording of, you know, uh, I mean, that that's clearly against the rules in most cases, uh, depending on the actual license associated with that uh, recording. But the way that they do it is... Um, the Daily Bird Call. Yeah. There are apps that exist that, that do this sort of stuff, but um, let's take a look at one of these. Um, so I think they have copyright information. Maybe not. Yeah, I can't. I can't recall. Uh, other than I, you know, I, I definitely looked at the, uh, you know, the copyright uh, rules, and I talked to the Zeno Canto folks about it. Here, here it is. It's Creative Commons. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, and I think some people might put more restrictive copyright protections on it, but it looks like the vast majority of these are Creative Commons license. And you can modify the thing. Yeah. Yeah. If this, if it, you know, the, the the project, the project's called Birdbot, by the way. Um, but if the Birdbot project ever truly sees the light of day, then you know, you have to be you have to be careful about that and respectful to the, the copyright holders. We were scraping Google um, Maps at one point. And yeah. Yeah. It's scraping. It, it's definitely easy to get into to you know to do things that violate you know a license um, doing automated web scraping. You know, either you know the content creator's license or the terms of terms of use of the web page. And so that's why I say. You know, it's it's something that, yeah, you sh you know, you have to use responsibly. Well, <laughs> so, oh, wait, wait, is that gonna be an app? Uh, 
Uh, I'd love for it to be. Uh, yeah, I'd love for it to be an app. Um, but I mean, it'd have to be something that you, you would be okay leaving outside. You know, just sitting there. So I was thinking, I was hopeful that it would run on a Raspberry Pi. Two phones, you need to be able to triangulate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but I mean the, the cool thing, you know, doing it by audio makes a lot of sense because you know if you're doing it visually, you actually have to be looking in, you know, the direction of the bird. But if you're, you know, audio because it's omnidirectional, you don't have to be looking at it. So it really lends itself um, to, uh, yeah, L lends itself to a, um, a machine learning application where you just have something listening all the time, kind of logging information. Well, and you can use a web service to actually do the processing and process you could. You absolutely could. Yeah, you could. You could definitely use that architecture. Um, Cloud-based data classification. Yeah. Whether you're going to log or not. Yeah. You throw that classification into another database of birds at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for uh, coming out on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, yeah. I'll be around. You know, I'm, all, I'm obviously always available if uh, anybody has projects that they want some um, some help with or some thoughts on. And uh, if you're not a member of Barn, uh, think about signing up. Uh, it's a great it's a great deal. And I uh, hope to see everybody here uh, at a future talk. Are you going to talk on the machine learning? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah.